Hello guys, back again. Hmm. Okay, now what we have done in the previous video, we have implemented uh, what they say, yeah, the score stuff, right? Now we are adding scores, and here is the time. So 10 slash 51, it's like 51 seconds, 51, 49 seconds, something like that. I'm going to change some part here. So when you're adding this timing thing, okay, instead of slash, we're going to add colon so that it looks more like time rather than something like score kind of stuff. Now you can see 10.59, 10.57, something like that, 10.55, whatever. So yeah, now what we need to do, pretty simple. Uh, we just need to check, we just need to check if the, you know, like if the TM game state is true or not. And at some particular point, if EDM minutes, if minutes become zero, then we have to display our leaderboard. That's what we're going to do. So we have a timer and if timer reaches, like if minutes reaches zero, seconds reaches zero every minute, right? So we don't worry about that. If minutes reaches zero, that's when we're going to display a UI shows who we want. So let's get started. If you look at our timer implementation, it's pretty simple. We are checking if seconds are zero, if seconds are zero. We are checking if minutes are zero, if minutes are zero, game time complete, otherwise we are decrementing the minutes and we are setting seconds to 60 again. If seconds are not zero, then we are decrementing seconds. So, for just for demonstration purposes, I am going to set the minutes to one minute and seconds to 10 seconds. And uh, here also, once, here also I am setting the seconds to 10. So, just to make sure, like if you have 60 seconds, we have to spend so much time, right? Let's get started. We have right now one seven, one six, one five, one three, one one. You can see server says game time completed. It is saying game time completed again and again and again. Right, so game time is completed. Now what we need to do, we just need to display a simple UI. Let's do it then. So there are two ways in which we can do this stuff. Either we can display in UI simply on the timer itself or we can display UI on every client. Uh, since game state is something that runs on, you know, like every client and it has all of the information, I think it's better to display um, interface, like UI interface right in the game state itself. So let's get started. Uh, so one thing that we can do is, um, yeah, so once game time is completed, I need to stop this timer, right? Because why once we game time completed, we don't need to run it every second again and again. I'm going to promote this thing to variable. I'm going to call it timer, timer where, whatever. And once game time is completed, I'm going to get this timer where and I'm going to invalidate it so that in clear and invalidate timer by handle and then game time is completed then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a user interface so go to main um, yeah go to user interface and go to widget blueprint and leaderboard let us create a new UI leaderboard and go to this leaderboard UI and let us see my UI skills which are extremely bad guys so don't worry about them so we're just going to launch an image back here, something like this, and we're going to set it up anchor so that it stays in place and changing its color and opacity to something like this. And then we're going to have a text which says who won. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just going to say who won. So keep it, I'm going to keep it something like here. And then we're going to have we're going to have two texts here. First text here, second text here, and uh, third text, fourth text. What are these texts for? Pretty simple. These are some info like who won, what is the score of what. Okay, so you might quote me on this like they are not of equal size, whatever. Really, this tutorial is mostly focused on. Uh, making games multiplayer games so in the midway if you guys don't know what i'm doing i'm developing a multiplayer game 50 versus 
50 versus 50 multiplayer game so the trailer link will be in description try to check it out and join discord we are trying to form a community of game developers so that you guys can give feedback on my game and i'm going to give you on give it on yours if you have any doubts you can just ask me out who knows maybe we can work together blue team score yeah and uh, red team score as well oh i think today blue drag game is getting released right yeah i need to check that out i forgot operation has to stop it's a community game it's getting released so let us keep it 12 just for now and let us keep it to 13 yeah why not so yeah so this is our uh ui whatever red team one yeah this is a simple ui so now once game time is completed what we can do is we can just be like yeah just chill bro uh, we're going to create widget and the widget is leaderboard and we're just going to add it to viewport add to viewport yep that's how it works guys now let us see now we will wait until the time goes away yeah the values will be something like that but don't worry uh yeah so now what we're going to do so as i said there are there are some variables where we have to enter them right before they are creating as i said like if you consider a stadium pc when you are spawning a character we made sure that team should be there by default so that we don't need to ask them again so similarly for leaderboard as well we need a couple of stuff we need red team score we need blue team score everything so let us get started so we need a red team score okay and let us keep it to integer or float whatever and we're going to do it by blue team score okay got it and go to blue team score and keep it exposed on spawn and instance editable and go to red team score and keep it instance editable and exposed on spawn now go to your game state and refresh this entire widget now you're going to get your red team score and blue team score what you're going to do pretty simple just pop them oh they are integers fine what a problem now uh, we're going to go to blue team score as well and red team score goes here and blue team score goes here got it now once we are spawning this leaderboard everything is done now let's go to this leaderboard widget and go to event construct when you are constructing you're going to pass those variables there so these variables will already be set now uh, this is one variable where we have to show like who won so one statement uh, result statement yes that's it so go to result here go to result uh, we're going to check uh, we're going to get our red team score we're going to get our blue team score and we're going to check which one is greater than what like if blue team wait ah, okay if red team is greater than blue team let us assume guys if red team is first of all what we can do is okay got it so first of all before doing any of this stuff we can just assign red team and blue team to those text variables this is a text variable right so red team score score text and we're going to set it to each variable so that we can change them dynamically and change it to text and change it to blue blue team score text now go to graph and then go to blue team score text and go to red team score text and we're going to be like set text and then we're going to be like set text we're going to set this text we're going to set this text as well and we're going to set it right here set the text as well and we're going to go to blue team score we're going to go to red team score okay we are setting those text as well now we're going to go to the red team score and we're going to go to the blue team score and we're going to check which one is greater 
if red team score is greater then we should do something about that so we'll go to the result statement okay and we're going to be like set text uh so red team one that's what we're going to set okay if we're going to first of all initialize our text variables to these particular variables and then we're going to give red team one red team one else there might be a chance of being tie as well right so what we're going to do is we're going to get these two things again and we're going to check if less than what it that means what blue team is greater than that thing if that one is true then we should be like uh yeah like blue team one blue team one otherwise tie it's a tie okay let us see how it works now so we'll wait until the time happens and the here is our like three players and yeah let's see how it works there <sighs> Whoa, it is a tie, and we got red team score is zero and blue team score is zero. Fine. Why we didn't get something here? Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So what happens is that game state exists on the server. No, this function will execute on the server, right? This function will not execute on the clients. This function will execute on the server. So let me create a function called add custom uh, whatever uh, display UI. Yeah, display display UI and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a custom event called add custom event display ui and we're going to uh, uh, multicast yeah do it multicast and display ui and we're going to do the same stuff right here again uh, like we're going to create a leaderboard widget and we're going to do everything same okay multicast also runs on server so we, if you just call this function it will be done so what you're going to do is once we break this thing uh, we can call something like display oh my god display ui i heard somewhere like i remember somewhere like game state doesn't call multicast functions we'll see if it works or not if it doesn't work we have to change our entire approach here we'll see how it works It's gonna be pretty simple by then as well. Yeah, I got a new idea right now. We'll see. It will work. So what happens now? Once we complete the timer, we're going to call a call function called multicast. As I told you, multicast is should be run on server. What happens is that when you call a function called multicast, that function will execute on every client. So what happens is that once the time is completed, you're going to like you're going to call the function multicast display UI and game state will exist on every client. So it executes that function and it displays UI. That's it. So let us change the values. Let us change like some. We'll fill some people and we're going to see does it change anything or not. We kill this guy. Okay, and we're going to kill him again. Okay, we killed him two times. Kill them two times. Now wait. Oh my god, it's too much. Now we can see red team one. You can see in every UI red team one. And you can see like yeah, like score is two and blue team score is zero. That's why he won. So that's it, guys. We displayed leaderboard UI. And uh, next in next tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some function to go back to the main menu and again joining and going back to the main menu. And yeah, I completed around four tutorials by this single day. So I'm going to edit them and I'm going to upload them and yeah. Don't need to worry about four days and thank you for watching the video and join discord we are trying to make a community of game developers multiplayer game developers and you guys can also give me feedback on my game and you can give you feedback on your game maybe we can work together towards the game we'll see what happens and thank you for watching the video and like and subscribe to the channel as well bye guys